historians, I'm Abby. And I'm Sophie. Today, we're going to be continuing our lesson on George Washington Carver. Last week, we talked about George's early life and his developments in the world of science. This week, we're going to dive into his artistic side and his love for plants. We remember from last week that George loved nature at a very young age, and people even called him the plant doctor. He had his own personal garden where he could study and care for plants when he was a boy. Because he studied plants when he was younger, which is called botany, if you remember from last week, George was able to dedicate himself to this field when he went off to college. With his education at Simpson College and at Iowa Agricultural College, aka Iowa State, George was able to deepen his love of plants and science as a whole. After graduating, we also remember George went off to the Tuskegee Institute, where he became the director of the Agricultural Department. With his work focusing on helping farmers, we touched on the pest that was harming many farmers, the boll weevil. What is a boll weevil? A boll weevil is a pest that feeds on parts of cotton plants, hurting the crop farmers are growing to sell. This is called a catch crop, a product farmers grow with the primary intention to sell. Cotton is also a crop that does not replenish nutrients well in its soil, which makes producing this crop in future years much more difficult. What is a nutrient? A nutrient is a substance that living things use to grow and survive. This is why it is important to eat nutritious foods. With these two factors in mind, George set out to help find ways for farmers to succeed. George spent a lot of his time studying plants at Tuskegee. He taught various agricultural courses and programs there, and he kept a personal garden and collected plant specimens to study. What is a specimen? A specimen is an individual plant, animal, mineral, or anything else that can be studied. This single item can be displayed as an example of a species or studied. While George was teaching and researching at Tuskegee, he set out to help poor farmers. The farmers George encountered were not able to afford better plows to dig deeper in the soil or fertilizer to put nutrients back into the soil. As the cotton crops failed and the soil was drained of nutrients, George decided he needed to educate farmers about different farming techniques. Monocropping is the practice of planting the same crop in a field every year and can strip the dirt of beneficial nutrients because not all plants add nitrogen back when growing. Crop rotation is the alternation of the kind of crop planted in a field every other year or more. This gives the soil time to recover from a crop that uses up the nutrients by planting a crop in that field the next year that would replenish the soil. For example, many farmers alternate growing corn and soybeans in a field because corn depletes the soil and soybeans replenish the soil of nutrients. Crop rotation has other benefits as well, including pests and fungus control. George Washington Carper studied the soil and properties of plants to see which ones would grow in their area and which ones could replenish the soil of nutrients like nitrogen. George found several types of crops that could be used in crop rotation because they could grow and restore the nutrients in the soil. These crops include peanuts, sweet potatoes, and soybeans, and other plants. Although these crops could grow, farmers were concerned about how they would make money by growing them. How could they sell them if there wasn't a demand for the crop? George decided to study these plants more to see what products could be made from them. Through his research, George discovered hundreds of uses for these plants. He found the most uses for the peanut. He published a pamphlet called How to Grow the Peanut and 105 Ways of Preparing It for Human Consumption in May 1917. The products that he found that could be made with peanuts include cosmetics like lotion and soap, drinks, foods, and other products like glue and gas. Many people think of peanuts when they hear about George Washington Carver because he became quite well known for his work with peanuts. Although he found many, many ways to make products from peanuts, he did not invent peanut butter. He wrote journal articles and pamphlets and gave lectures across the country about agriculture and his research. He even met and became friends with other famous inventors, such as Henry Ford. Some of the products George found could be used made with peanuts and sweet potatoes were paints and dyes. It is not surprising that he found ways to use these crops for art and textile or fabric work because of his background with painting and fiber arts. As a child, he was not able to help with heavy farm work, so he helped with household chores such as cooking, cleaning, and sewing. 
He learned to make fiber art through crocheting, weaving, and embroidery. George also learned to draw and paint. When he started going to school at Simpson College, he studied art. He liked to do botanical paintings. What does botanical mean? Botanical means something that is related to plants. Remember how botany is the study of plants? Botanical art is art that focuses on plants. His talent for botanical painting led his teacher, Edda Budd, to suggest he study agriculture and botany. He decided to do so and transferred to Iowa Agricultural College, now Iowa State. During his time at this college, George made a painting called Ducca and Cactus. This painting was chosen to represent Iowa at the World's Fair in 1893. What was the World's Fair? The World's Fair was a large exhibition set up in cities like London, Chicago, and New York that displayed inventions and accomplishments from all over the world. There are World's Fair exhibitions that still happen today. When teaching at Tuskegee, he didn't give up his love for art. He spent some of his free time crocheting and embroidering. Tuskegee still has a collection of his crochet. George even incorporated art into his teaching. He encourages students to draw when studying plants and making observations. George Washington Carver developed paints and dyes from plants. He figured out how to extract pigments from plants and clay during his research. What is a pigment? A pigment is a material that changes the color of something and usually comes in a powder form. We mixed in with paints or other things that need color. George actually patented the process of making paints by taking pigments from clay. One of the ways George used the paints he made from plants and clay was supplying paint to help poor families improve the appearance of their buildings. George Washington Carver was a multi-talented person. His passion for helping others and his love of plants, science, and art worked well together. He made a big impact on the agricultural world thanks to his interest in plants and art. Today we will celebrate his interest by planting our own plants and making paints out of plants. Adult supervision is needed for this activity. Our first activity today is going to be planting our own plants, just like George Washington Carver did in his greenhouses and gardens. You will need a cup, small pot, or other container, some seeds to plant, some soil to plant the seeds in, and some water. You will also need a spoon or small shovel for scooping the soil. First thing you're going to want to do is grab a container for your plant, whether that be a cup or a mug or a small pot, it doesn't really matter as long as it can hold some dirt. Then take some dirt, whether that be potting mix or soil from your backyard, and fill your container up about three quarters of the way with that dirt or soil. It's important to have a lot to support the root system of your plant. Then you're going to take a seed or a few seeds, whether that be flower or vegetable seeds, and you're going to pop that in the top of the soil, about a half an inch down. And then after you do that, you can cover your seed or seeds with a little bit more soil. Then water it in and come back every few days to check on it to see if it needs more water and to see how it's growing. We hope you have fun! Our next activity is making our own paints from plants, just like George Washington Carver. You will need a few berries or other fruit, but we found that blackberries work the best to make a red or purple pigment a few leaves of spinach to make a green paint, three cups, whether that be plastic cups or a mug, one tablespoon of flour, one microwave safe bowl or cup, a third of a cup of water, a strainer, an apron and towels for any messes this might make, and a paper and paintbrush to get creative with. Because hot water is used in this next project, adult supervision is required we recommend starting the process of making the spinach green paint um, before starting with the other one because it takes a little bit longer to get the pigments out of the plant. So what you're going to do is you're going to microwave a third a cup of water in a microwave safe bowl until it boils. And then you're going to take those spinach leaves and let them steep in the water for the amount of time that it takes to make the berry paint. Um, this is because it takes hot water and time to get those green pigments out of the leaves of the spinach. To make the berry paint, you're going to want to collect the berries and put it in a cup. Then you're going to take a fork or a spoon and mash them. You want to make sure to smash them so that you get all of the juices out. See how there's a lot of clumps left because of all the seeds and the skins and the berries? You're going to want to take a strainer 
and put the mixture through the strainer into the cup. This way it gets all of the juices out but leaves um, all of the seeds and the skins out of your paint. Then you're going to take flour and sprinkle it in there. Not a lot, but enough to make your paint a little bit thicker. Then you're going to mix it up and you're going to have a nice berry paint. Then you're going to take your spinach out of this water it's been steeping in and do the same thing you did with the berries and strain it through to get all the pigments out. Then you're going to mix in some flour to thicken up this green paint. It's important to have towels and aprons for this project because sometimes you end up making a little bit of a mess. <laughs> the paints we made using plants, just like George Washington Carver did, can be used to make some beautiful art. You can be inspired by George Washington Carver and make some botanical art like this rose. Or you could think back to the seed that you planted earlier and paint a prediction of what that plant might look like when it grows older. Or maybe you can just paint whatever you like. What inspires you? Don't be afraid to make art that you want. We hope your plants grow. Have fun with your homemade plant-based paints. We'd love to see the art you make. You can tag the African American Museum of Iowa on Instagram or Facebook. Thank you for coming on this history adventure with us. We hope you enjoyed learning more about George Washington Carver, agriculture, and art. We'll see you again next week. Bye!